So what common types of wound are you going to come across in an A&E department or a minor injuries department or in our general clinical life? Well, we have different ways of describing wounds and injuries. And a common one is contusion. Now, if there is insult to a tissue, then the capillaries can be disrupted, they can be burst, and red blood cells will leak out of the capillaries into the tissues. Or indeed, if a larger vessel is damaged and there's leaking of blood into the tissues, okay, I know it can form hematoma. You can get hematoma formation if there's a lot of blood. But if there's smaller amounts of blood, you end up with red cells in the tissue spaces. So there's been a bursting of capillary or small blood vessels. Blood has moved from the intravascular compartment into the interstitial compartment. And of course, there it can't circulate. It's stuck there. And what it does is the haemoglobin in the red cells will deoxygenate, so those cells will become dark red, and we perceive that as, as a dark blue through the surface of the skin. So a bruising is, is that, it's the accumulation of deoxygenated haemoglobin in the red cells, in the tissues. And over time they're going to be broken down and phagocytosed, and if you watch a, watch a bruise, over time it changes from black and blue and it changes to a yellowy colour. Now the reason it changes to a yellowy colour is that the macrophages will phagocytose the red blood cells which are in the tissues, but it produces bilirubin as a, as a byproduct, as a waste product. It's the same discoloration you get in jaundice, the accumulation of bilirubin in the blood in the case of jaundice. So you get the bilirubin accumulation in the tissue, you get the yellow in colour and that gradually fades as it's reabsorbed. So a contusion is just a posh word for a bruise really. But you can get a contusion anywhere. So for example, if you get a deceleration injury, you can get cerebral contusion and bruising in the brain. Now another common description is an abrasion injury. An abrasion just means a scrape or a graze. It's a fairly superficial loss of tissue. So you can get abrasions if you fall off your bike and scrape your arm. Abrasions, superficial grazes and scrapes. Although having said that, abrasions can go into deeper tissues as well. Another term is avulsion. An avulsion injury is one with tissue loss. It's like a gouging and you lose like a chunk of tissue, which may mean that the ed edges of the wound can't be approximated and you have to go on to healing by secondary intention. Or other times you can even get a tendon pulling off a bit of bone and you get an avulsion fracture as a bit of tissue is pulled away. So it's kind of loss of a chunk of tissue is a, one way to look at an avulsion injury. Now people often talk about lacerations. What do we mean by a laceration? Some people use laceration when they mean a big cut. But in actual fact a laceration is where there's an opening of the skin, the skin is split apart as a result of blunt trauma. So if someone's hit with a stick on the head, the tissues can open up, but it's not because they're cut, it's because the force of the impact has split the tissues open. So a laceration is an open wound caused by blunt trauma. And again, this can occur internally. So after trauma to the abdomen, for example, you could get laceration of the spleen or laceration of the liver causing uh, internal hemorrhage, potentially life-threatening internal hemorrhage. So laceration is caused by blunt trauma. If something is cut, it becomes an incised wound. So if you cut yourself with a kitchen knife or anything sharp, that's an incised wound. So it's a cut with a sharp object. People often get cut with shards of glass if they put their hand through a window or something like that. And the distinction isn't really academic, it's important, because if there's a laceration, that means there's been a, a lot of trauma into a tissue. So if someone's been hit on the head and there's a laceration, that means a lot of force has gone through that patient's head and they are at risk of subdural hematoma, extradural hematoma, the complications that are associated with that trauma. So laceration means a lot of injury has gone into the tissue. Think about damage to adjacent tissues as a result of the force of the impact.
Whereas a sharp blade will cut through anything, an incised wound. So for example, if someone's got an incised wound to the hand, that can cut through blood vessels, it can cut through tendons. So there might be functional deficit of the hand if someone's cut through a tendon. It'll cut through anything, so think about what it's cut through. But the wound you see is probably the wound you're going to get. There's less likely to be damage to surrounding tissues with an incised wound. But do be aware of damage to tendons, vessels and nerves and examine the patient carefully just to work out what the extent of the injury actually is. Another description we use is puncture wounds where there's a fine penetration of the tissue. And again this can penetrate into body cavities causing a pneumothorax for example or penetrating into the abdomen or into the heart. You know you've got to think about what tissues it's going into. And you've also got to think about what's made that wound because it's sometimes very hard to clean incised wounds. You might need to go for a surgical cleaning option because you don't want bacteria, you don't want foreign bodies in an incised wound deep inside the body tissues. Now people often talk about strains. Strains are caused by stretching forces and strains affect muscles, the fascia around muscles, or the tendons which are connecting muscles to bone. So strains are stretching forces in muscles, muscle fascia, and the tendons connecting the muscles to the bones. As opposed to sprains, so you can get a sprained wrist or a sprained ankle. So around about the joint there's going to be fibrous tissue, mostly made of collagen, white fibrous tissue, and in a sprain there's going to be damage to those white fibres. Some of those fibres can be stretched or torn, causing a sprain to the tissues around about a joint.